So, today I want to work on a cover. The best thing to do is talk about why, right? So, when you start writing music, when you start doing anything, the way it usually goes is you find the things you like, find the things you identify with, and you tap into those and you break them down and you go, what makes this something I like? But before you get the skill to create on your own, what that usually ends up in is you actively copying your idols, right? You'll take a song that you like and pretty much make a song that sounds just like it. Over time, once I got into making my own music, I lost that connection to the things I love, to the things that I really identified with and so I want to get back into that. Doing covers can flex your production muscles in a way that you don't usually when you're making something original. You can play others music and identify what it is about that music that is the root of it, but then you can improvise and add your own stamp to it. And it doesn't always come out good, but I feel like it's a great exercise to learn to be a better producer, to learn to be a better creator in music. So I want to keep the song that I'm going to be working on a little bit hidden for now and see if you can identify it. And then over time, when I get the lyrics on it, you'll definitely see what song it is. But right now I have kind of the dirtiest groove in my mind. So let's get started. I have it at 160 BPM because the song itself is going to be around 83. So let's get our click on. And we're going to need, actually, before I do that, I want to start with the bass line. Okay, so check it out. I think drums are gonna be next. Recording drums, this whole process is new to me. When you record, you need multiple mics usually. The point is to pick up the different frequencies so you can get the mix you need eventually. But when you don't have the setup, it may be a little different. You can still complete the mission. Pay attention and listen. Put your mic in the room position. Then chop up the drum tracks. We got solutions for that. What do you do for the fact that it doesn't get the bass? We can augment that during the next phase of the mixing. So I'ma get my licks in and finish recording drums. Thanks for listening. Recording drums. 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 Alright, so that sounded pretty good. The one thing that this condenser mic doesn't get is space, right? So I need to record a layered kick on this so I can get a little bit more space in there. So what I actually did was I took the kick that was already on there and I separated it into a different track and then put it into the uh, the Kong drum designer, like the sampler. That's the kick from my actual drum set, right? Then what I did was I loaded in uh, another bassier kick, really tight, really punchy, and then I layered those two together. And then also I separated, I separated out the hi-hats so I could treat those differently. I also separated out the snare Best thing about this snare is there's nothing on it. I tried to come up with a an effects chain that made it sound good, but it to me it just sounds good 
as a sample itself. So I just pulled the snare out, treated the hi-hats, and this is what you get. And then kick. Feel like these drums are really starting to hit right now. They're really, really starting to come into their own. So I think now I want to put some keys on and I have to put very specific keys on and probably some bells or something in a higher register because this line is super iconic that I'm going to put on here and it, it's honestly going to give away what song this is. So I'll be back in a second. Seven hours later. So yeah, the chords are sounding really good. I have them all tracked in. Let's take you through them really quickly and then you can hear how the whole thing sounds. Guitar is on there and it sounds something like this. Yeah, so it gives like a nice soft funk repetitive background, right? Sounds really good. And then there's a lead instrument that sounds really good. And it goes like this. Let's turn that on. And then the bells, I gotta admit, I had to track those out. I had to play the line separately because, you know, I can't play at this speed. I was able to get it at about 100 BPM, but I'm, I'm working on my keys, so. This is I'd Rather Be With You by Bootsy Collins. It's a classic funk song. It's a classic song in general. And there's a current song, Redbone by Childish Gambino, that takes a lot of influences from this song, right? In the feel, in the instrumental line. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mash the two up and I wanna lay some vocals on this and I'll let you hear a little bit of it when I get that going. I wanna do a full release though. I wanna do a video, I wanna do a whole thing. So if you just keep your eye out, I'll be releasing this really soon, probably in the next couple weeks. But let me get some vocals on this and I'll give you a sample and then um, I'll release the whole thing a little bit later. Cool. I got some vocals on, it took me a minute, but I got some vocals on and I think they're sounding pretty good. Everything's mixed pretty well. I don't know if this is the final mix, but it sounds pretty good. I'm gonna let you hear a little bit, and then that'll be the end of it until the, the full video comes out. So yeah, awesome. <laughs> All right, that's all you're gonna get. Um, you know, I'm still working on being a, a, a better singer and a, and a better musician in general. I think I'm gonna just keep releasing music for a few years until 
I'm at the level where I think that I can do this well, um, but never be satisfied, never give up. There's always room for improvement. And um, yeah, let's, let's keep this a work in progress. So thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I'd rather be with you.